Hi, this is Drew Tignanelli. This is a client update March 17th, 2011. A lot of interesting things been going on. The uh, stock market's taken a couple hits in the last uh, three or four days. Uh, the situation in Japan is continuing to mount. Uh, hopefully within the next couple days we'll have some kind of uh, assurance that this thing's under control. Um, but even if it's not, uh, history has proven that these types of events are not um, necessarily devastating to the markets uh, and the economy as a whole, but this time may be a little different. Not because I think it's um, it's going to be significantly worse. I don't, I don't know. There's still a tremendous amount of uncertainty out there about what's happening in Japan. Um, but the situation this time is very unique in the sense that the third largest economy could be the second largest economy, depending on which day you look, whether China or Japan. Japan had always been the second, but last year China overtook them slightly. Um, so let's just call it the third largest economy in the world is basically shut down to some degree. You know, the people are are uh, panicked. Uh, they're not going to be, it's not going to be business as usual in Japan right now. Um, the rest of the world is worried too about what's happening in Japan and how's that going to affect us. And you've seen some panic buying in other parts of the world. For example, I was just reading that in China, that they bought out all the salt supply of the country for the most part because they've heard that iodized salt can help you uh, prevent radiation uh, poisoning. Um, but the, the funny thing is, and funny and peculiar, is that the Chinese are least going to be affected even if there was a total nuclear meltdown in Japan because it's where the winds blow and the winds will blow east toward the west coast of the United States that won't go backwards into uh, the southern parts of China, but yet there's still panic buying going on there. Um, this is not a situation where you'll see a nuclear explosion. This is a situation where you'll have excessive amounts of radiation released into the atmosphere, um, which then anybody in line of the radiation where it's released or as the winds blow it, um, that's where you're going to have your, your, your potential problems. But nobody even knows what those problems will be because, you know, for example, in Chernobyl where the radiation was released fairly significantly, the animals in the region, the people in the region, there hasn't been as much devastation as they, they uh, had originally anticipated. Um, but again, tremendous amount of uncertainty and this situation seems to be even worse. Uh, possibly than Chernobyl. So um, we're not sure yet, but the point is is that um, the markets are going to be up fairly significantly today, the March 17th. So this is Thursday when I'm taping this. You may not get this until Friday or Monday, um, but today, March 17th, at this point in time, it's 9 a.m. in the morning, market should be up fairly significantly. Why? Because the G7, they're going to get together and have a economic response to this. And I think people are getting used to the idea that governments are going to bail us out every single time there's a, there's a problem. Uh, Japan has printed at this moment in time over 700 billion yen. Uh, well, in dollar value, yen. So it's actually trillion dollars worth of trillions of dollars of yens. Um, and so that's the response that you're getting every time you have this crisis is more money being printed. That's why our response to this whole thing is you stay long commodities such as oil and metals and agriculture. Um, you stick with companies that are multinational paying big dividends and you hold a lot of cash on the sideline and, uh, and currencies of strong countries. And that's what we're doing at this point in time. We've got close to uh, 30, 40 percent of our clients' money sitting in cash and short-term bonds. Another 10, 15 percent in international currencies of some of the strongest nations in the country, in the world. And we're holding probably, you know, 10% or more in specific types of commodities, uh, commodity stocks or commodity type ETFs. 
because we believe that that's going to be the place that you want to be. If there's a panic, they're going to buy a lot of food just to store it up and stock it up. This is not a time that the world supply can afford people stocking up on food because there's a major shortage in the supplies of wheat and, and corn and so forth. Um, uh, you can't, uh, you also, if you if you pull back on nuclear energy like they're talking about doing, um, natural gas and, and oil are going to be big winners with this. And then you have the situation that more people are going to be panicked and want to own gold in case there's an all-out crisis uh, take place. Uh, gold and silver and, and other types of uh, metals that you can hoard, platinum, palladium, etc. And, you know, it's, a, it's not a time to be panicked in any way, shape, or form. It's a time to look for the opportunities as they come. Uh, but we would still encourage you to remain conservative in your 401ks because, you know, I know the economy is improving, but the reason the economy is improving is there's been a lot of money printed by the uh, United States and Europe and Japan. Um, and the rest of the emerging market world. And the emerging market worlds are pulling back now. China's pulling back. India's pulling back. South Korea's been pulling back. Australia's been pulling back. They've been trying to limit the effects of inflation in their country. And you're just now starting to see inflationary forces in the U.S. and England and, and, and Europe. And that's why I believe that um, this is not a time to be uh, try to be a hero and get a great rate of return. This is a time to go with the Mark Twain philosophy of I'm looking for more of the return of my money than the return on my money. So again, in summation, remain conservative. Um, commodities, Asia, uh, the strongest currencies of the world, multinational blue chip companies paying great dividends. And uh, we'll be back to you with another update as soon as we feel it's prudent to, to uh, give you another update. Um, for now, this is Drew Tignanelli saying God bless.